just a little bit of cleanup to do on the low poly. Um, so here, I'm just duplicating this side. The faces on here were reversed, so this would appear transparent in game. So I just ended to duplicate those, and because they're occupying the exact same space in the UV editor, they'll just take on the exact same texture. So you can see there, when they're all combined, they take the same texture. If we turn on our shaded UVs, we can see they're a slightly different color, uh, just indicating that those UVs are overlaid. So I've just gone into UV Snapshot, and I'm exporting out my UVs. I'm setting it to 10, 20, uh, 2048. Now I'm deleting all of all my history, deleting history, export selection as an OBJ. And uh, just incrementing the name there. And back here, I'm going to, back in Maya, I've saved this as high poly 01, so it is a high poly model and I'm going to subdivide this. I'll just uh, separate it all and start with the pillar. What I'm doing is double clicking to select my edge loops and I'm just picking all the ones that I think will need an extra bevel. So I've selected everything that I think will need a bevel. I hit three on the keyboard to smooth preview, which shows me how it's going to look uh, when I smooth it. I can see it's almost worked except for this section, so I'll just insert an edge loop there. And now when I smooth it, I need another edge loop. Just smooth previewing to make sure that holds its form. So that, that looks nice. So now we'll smooth it for real. I'll do two subdivision levels, so mesh smooth. And so that's the finished geometry. So that's, that's not smooth preview, that's just actually smoothed. Uh, that's important to distinguish between the smooth preview and really smoothing. Just duplicating that over for the other side. Okay, I'll just isolate this arch and double clicking all the edge loops that I think will need to be beveled. It's important to understand this concept, what we're doing here. We're making a high poly that will be a source for our normal maps. Um, all we're doing is exporting this finished model out of Maya, bringing it into XNormal, and then it will bake the normal information from that high poly onto our low poly. So because it's just a source, and it's not going into the game engine at all, we actually don't care too much about the geometry. Uh, we certainly don't care about the resolution. We can go as high res as we want, and we don't care about the UVs either. Uh, because it doesn't need to be unwrapped. It happens to be unwrapped because it's starting with the low poly, but the new subdivides, it would have very messy UVs. Um, this section, you can see I've realized I've missed, uh, this is basically a giant N-gon, so more than four-sided polygon. So I'm just uh, multi-cutting to clean that up. And of course, because I'm currently working on the high poly version, I'll have to do this step again on my low poly and re-export that out. I could just export this as the low poly, but it's, it's much easier just to, to do that again. It only takes a moment. So this sort of high poly modeling at this level is extremely simple. It's just inserting control loops or bevels. So basically the bevel gives it a nice smooth edge. And sometimes you need an extra loop, which you typically call a control loop, like there, to help that smoothing process um, form the shape you want, because in this case I don't want those edges too smooth, it is meant to be a, a hard surface material. So zipping through it pretty quickly. If you are doing the bevel, you want to make sure you've selected all of the loops that you need, all of the edge loops. If you try to bevel it in pieces, you'll end up with pretty messy geometry that won't smooth very well. So while I said it doesn't matter too much if your geometry is a little bit messy when you smooth it because it's high poly, what does matter is that it does smooth well. And so if your geometry is just a little bit too messy, you'll often get pinching. So it's important to still try to maintain a clean modeling workflow, but you don't need to be too concerned um, as long as it does smooth well. So there I just tried to bevel the entire thing, which really didn't work. 
um, all those vertical diagonal edges around the semicircle once they're beveled that forces the um, low poly shape to maintain its height edges which we don't want so just once again selecting all the edge loops that need to be beveled making sure I get those vertical sections so you can see there a bit of a problem it's uh, not smoothing well because it's messy geometry and that's because of the vertical bevels the top and the bottom there are going into triangles so what I'm doing is undoing the bevel and just continuing that selection straight down so that when it does bevel those those vertical pieces inside the, the sort of window glass pane type sections aren't being uh, overly well aren't being triangulated when it's when it bevels so you can see now when it smooths uh, it's nice clean topology so I'll put the smooth modifier on and uh, just delete the back one and duplicate that front again and scale that so it's reversed nice easy way to do the the other side and um, and that's it I'm not worrying about the doors because they're just completely flat and exporting that out with HP in the file name as a an object an OBJ file so old door HP so I can easily identify in the file name that it is the high poly model and just quickly before I move on the low poly I have to clean up this end gone and you can see there I just made a little mistake which has caused some messy geometry very important to pick that up so we'll just isolate that section again and clean it up very quickly in the target weld and here I've triangulated it's an important step just before you finish exporting it out into X normal just triangulate your model now what I want to do I've just centered the pivot and I'm creating I'm running a script which is available with this video UV shell hard edge all this does is convert all of the texture border edges into hard edges and everything else into soft edges in our UV uh, mesh display so by loading this script you can then select all of your script middle click drag that onto the shelf then anytime you click the shelf with any object that is selected all of those texture seams become border uh, become hard edges and everything else becomes a soft edge so it's just a nice quick way to prep your model for a normal map now what I'm doing is selecting all of my UVs and with the move tool I'm selecting the normal uh, axis orientation and what that does is let me scale out all of the faces directly from the center of the face in the correct direction I'm just applying a, um, a transparent shader from the hypershade here just so I can see I want to make sure that this shader that this shell this this object that I'm making matches the uh, overlaps the entire low poly model it actually also needs to overlap the high poly but our high poly is identical in size so once it overlays everything I'm just exporting this out and changing the file name to cage so I've loaded up X normal and in my high definition meshes I'm loading up the one the file with HP so it's the high poly and in my low definition meshes right click add mesh and load up the LP the low poly and now I'm clicking the name and right clicking the name and going browse external cage file and finding that cage that I exported out of Maya and just note that it brings up a message a warning saying that your cage must be identical to your low poly it's very important that there is no difference if the cage has been subdivided uh, if you've just made any sort of modeling changes to either the cage or the low poly so that that so that they're different you'll get an error and just changing the file folder that it's saving it to and here I'm using a targa uh, any sort of high resolution file format is what you want 
and I'm creating both a normal map and an ambient occlusion map. I've just sped this up, by the way. So being a 2048 squared texture, um, the ambient occlusion is a fairly slow render. And we can see here in Photoshop, what I've just created, this one is an object space normal map, which is actually useful for us, but we also want a tangent space. So I'll we'll just go into the settings there and tick tangent space on normal map uh, in XNormal. And I'll render that again but I don't want to override it. I actually want to keep my object space normal map, which will be useful. So I'll just call this one uh, normal, I'll put tange, which will make sense because it'll save the word normal in the file. So this is a tangent space normal map. Okay, so here in Photoshop, I've brought in my UVs, just the, this is the UV snapshot out of Maya. And I've made a black layer. And what I want to do is create a material map. So looking in Maya, I'm just checking which shells, uh, are, in this case, are the doors. And I'm selecting those and painting them a particular color. It doesn't matter at all which color you choose. This is just so that Quixel can identify different materials. So currently I'm selecting everything that I want to be a wooden material and painting it, in this case, blue. I mean, I'll probably make the wood green or something completely different, but that doesn't matter. This is so that uh, we can click everything blue until Quixel everything blue will have wood, everything black will have stone, etc. Now I'm just selecting those shells on the inside, making sure I've got both of the front and the back. So that the only reason I'm jumping to Maya is to make sure I'm getting all of the shells I want. I don't want these ones to be wood, I'm picking a different colour, so I'm painting those red on a separate layer, because that's going to be glass. And everything black will be stone, so as long as I've got those three colours, because I only want fundamentally three materials. Um, I'm just checking the wood, and I see there's a couple of shells that I've missed. And this is why I'm jumping to Maya every now and then to make sure that I've got all of the shells that should be wood. And the other thing I'm doing now is just filling those. Um, initially, when I painted some of those wood shells, I used the magic wand to select the shell, but I think I want it to be a little bit wider just to make sure that it covers the entire UV shell. So I'm just double checking, I've got everything in Maya that should be wood. And I seem to be missing these um, inside shells here. So I'm just, yep, so these, these shells here are all part of the door. So I'll just paint those blue. And I'll just, um, paint over these shells, just to want to make sure they're blue. And I'll save that out as a color map, just the, the word color map in the, in the door name, the file name. So we'll load up Quixel Dedo. And to start with, I've clicked on the mesh. So we're bringing in the low poly, clicking in material ID and loading up the color map that I just made. Loading up the tangent space normal map. Now I'm loading the object space and the ambient occlusion maps. and making sure this is set to Unity 5 uh, target. Select, selecting the folder I want this, these materials to be saved into and clicking Create. Okay, so now I'll turn on 3D and we should see our material, our object with our normal maps attached to it and the ambient occlusion. I'll just zoom in and do a quick inspection to make sure I'm not seeing any really obvious errors. Should all be fairly clean. If you do see problems, you need to clean up that normal map. So I'm clicking on Smart Material. And as a starting point, I'll click on Stone, which will apply it to the entire model to start with. So that'll, that'll do as a starting point. I'll just go to the top layer and click on this little square and click the black because I want only the things that are black to take on this stone material. 
And so inside this stone folder, I can come through and change the color, for example. So I'd like it to be a little bit more towards the orange tinge. So on the left there, that's the mask. So by clicking on that black and white image, that opens up the mask editor, the Dyna mask. And when I clicked yes in the menu that opened, that lets me paint my Dyna mask directly if I wanted to. Um, but what I'm actually doing is just selecting a couple of the different templates to test how that works and, and to see what sort of effect I'm getting. And notice all, all I'm doing is working on the uh, edges. So it's the, the cavities, the little sort of cracked details. I've decided what I want is more detail on my normal map. So I've opened up Endu, new project launch, and just set that to 2048. And I'm bringing in my material and I'm bringing in my tangent space normal map. My mesh and my tangent space normal map are loaded. Just selecting where I want to save it and clicking create new project. So keep in mind now, what I'm doing is I'm in Endu, not Dedu. So here in Endu, just clicking on Add New Sculpt Layer, which lets me draw directly on my normal map. And so the doors, just selecting a shape. In this case, I've probably gone a bit too quickly to make this. Um, it's probably better to look at photo reference you can see when I update my image, that shape I've created has, has appeared on my door. I can select on that sculpt layer which is a group, a folder in the layers menu in Photoshop and move that entire shell around. And it's still live inside of Endu, so I can change these sliders and make adjustments. And your typical workflow with Endu, and Dedu for that matter, is fairly experimental. You need to just select options until you get the sort of effect you're after. Uh, over time, you'll start to learn what does what, um, how to get the effect you're after more quickly but you should always be trying different options until, until it starts to appear how you want. So I'm just trying to get a sort of soft um, groove into the door. I can see that effect there, so that works nicely. Just a, a very good normal map effect onto a simple low poly plane. And Control T lets me transform that object. I'm just going to duplicate right quick, duplicate group, now when I move it over, I'm holding down shift to snap it in the horizontal. So now I'm duplicating that group again and making a smaller one above, which guarantees it's the, the exact same width and just control D, uh, sorry, control T to transform and scale that down a little. I'm merging that layer, which turns it into a single layer that's not live anymore. Now when I duplicate it, I'm getting both of those materials right on top of each other. And so I just need to align them in the vertical once. So I'll turn back 3D back on. So getting those in alignment.
pretty close. Okay. So in the photo reference, I want to recreate this um, very obvious brick structure for the pillars. So I'm just selecting my shells in Maya to make sure I'm looking at the correct bit, and it is these. And I've actually just copied this photo. I'm going to use the Endo Photo Map Conversion uh, tool to turn this photo into a normal map and overlay it. So I've just moved the wires, the photo underneath the wireframe, the UVs. I just want to make sure I'm only getting the center of the the bricks. So I don't want to catch the, the side of the photo, the edge of the bricks. And I'll just select just the bit I want and then Control shift i to inverse selection and then hit delete. And that gets rid of everything outside of that selection. Just got an extra section there when I move it out that wasn't cropped, so I'll just delete that. It's very slightly skewed because the photo is not perfectly straight on to the camera when I took the photo. So just Control T to transform selection, and I'm using the warp tool to make minor adjustments to try to get that a little bit more aligned. So I'm happy enough with that. There's a couple of bits on the texture that I don't want to see replicated throughout the model. So I'm using the clone stamp tool. So just holding Alt on a nice clean section of the photo and then drawing on another section to move that, to clone, clone that selection over. So just a quick cleanup job, really. And just duplicating all of these over. Now merging those layers so they're all on, all on one layer and then I can duplicate the whole lot over to the other side of these shells. And again, merging all of those so the whole lot's on one layer. Then in Endo I just click the Convert to Normal Map button and now it's just a matter of playing with these settings to try to get an effect that I'm after. I'm turning the opacity down because I still do want to see the Normal Map bake out of X Normal uh, underneath. We're just trying to get the impression of bricks on top. So checking it in 3D to see how it looks. In 3D, just hold down shift and right click to move your light around. So as a standard, it kind of works well, but I'm just going to go through the settings in Endo. And trying to trying to find something I like a bit more than that. Playing around with those curves gives some nice results. I mean, it's really a matter of personal preference on what sort of direction you want to take it. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Now, what I'm going to do is convert my map, my entire normal map, into an ambient occlusion. So normal to AO, click active dock, and that will automatically generate an ambient occlusion. And I've used, I've done that just to create this, the new bricks that I just made. So I'm just copying that and pasting it into my existing ambient occlusion. So the ambient occlusion that I've baked out of X normal is a much nicer AO map than the one that Endu generated. Um, but I want the, the darkness from these bricks included in that. And I'm just going to, going to adjust the levels just to, to push that a bit further. So I really want the gaps in between the bricks to be a lot darker to give it a sense of depth. And because I've pushed it so much further, the top section, the top layer of the bricks are just a little bit too dark. So I'm just selecting these top sections and with a, an eraser set to about 25% strength, I'm just, uh, let's turn that up to about 50% strength, just um, erasing the top. So I'm getting nice dark cavities and, and not so dark um, surface effect on that ambient occlusion. So just a quick way to sort of fake some ambient occlusion on that um, on those bricks. And I'll save this as O2 just because I don't want to overwrite the original ambient occlusion. And what I'm doing is just quickly reloading a new DDo project with my new ambient occlusion map. And I'm calling this incrementing the file name. And here it is in 3D. Brand new project in 3D. So this time I'm going to load, I looked at the brick materials and uh, I think I quite like that effect. Um, I'm trying a couple of different options. Just taking a look at this old concrete. It's kind of okay, but it's not really what I'm after. So I'm hitting delete and these different stone material um, give it a nice effect. I do like this one. It's close, but what I want to try is this brick um, that caught my eye in the ceramic section. Now, if I just change the, the scale of the brick so that it increments a bit more, just experimenting with how that brick material is tiling. Clicking on the back section to make sure that that's set to just the brick materials, the black. And I'm scaling the various sections. One thing to note though is the tab is currently set to normal. So I'm actually just scaling, tiling the, the normals at the moment. Now what I've done is load up this brick material just as a single material. And I've loaded up the smart uh, mesh editor, the mask editor, which lets me paint out the mask. And I'm going through and painting out everything that I don't want for these these new bricks. And what I what I want to do is just have these bricks at the top section, because you see from the photo reference that that top section is made from a different type of brick than the, the rest of the model. So I've got these sort of high frequency bricks and I'm just painting out the mask. Then I apply that mask. So we can see that the old bricks, I'm having problems when I turn down the opacity, it's not disappearing. So what I'm doing is going into the mask with a very light brush and just masking out. So I'm painting over it again, but only in half strength. Um, this works, but a better way to do it was would be to realize that I'm on the normal map, not on the ambient, the albedo map. So I've just realized that. So clicking the albedo map is very important. And the opacity slider in the albedo now works quite well. But that's fine. Now masking, masking it out is a good way to go. So I'm just playing with the color variation. 
both on the edges, the variation, and the base colors here. So just experimenting with these settings to get the, the kind of um, grayer, redder sort of stone material look. Just trying to make everything match. So it's fairly experimental. You want to just try different colors, seeing how they all blend together. So it's sort of in a brown red hue. So I was happy with that. Now I'm going to apply a wood material and just set that to the door color, the blue. It looks good, but I'll just click on that base and turn the scale down. It's just a little too detailed. You can see if we make that scale too high in the, or low in the negative, um, it's repeating too often. It's the, the, that repetition is obvious. So negative two looks good, but it's still a bit strong. Um, now just experimenting with the color. I've gone for a green. So I think negative one works, but I'm turning down the texture intensity. I'm also just going to experiment with some of the template masks on the door. So we can see here the black and white. I'll just hit accept and take a look at what sort of effect that gives me. You can see, because it's grayscale, it's fading. So the 100% white will be full color and black will be no color whatsoever, revealing the original material, and gray will be somewhere in between. So you can see there, those, those templates that are very white, almost, no, sorry, very black, almost completely get rid of your textures. So I've gone into the mask editor and selecting a brush and I'm painting, what I'm painting now is the actual mask. So I'm not painting the color of the material. I'm just changing the brush of these masks, going through and experimenting with some of these different brush settings. It's not bad, but um, that coffee stain type effects is certainly not what I'm after. Um, I can just erase out a mask at any time. I quite like this effect, but I'll just reverse the space so it's pointing downwards. The brush is, is pointing down. And I'll try making large and smaller, different sizes. Um, so that fading on the, the top of the door there, I'm happy with. Just adding a glass material now, coming back to the main workflow, setting that to the red material, which is the just those little glass sections. And I don't really need to do anything about those, I'm just going to leave them as, as it is. I'm just turning down the opacity on the normal map of the wood. So it just feels a little bit too rough. I only wanted a little bit of a, a sense of the, the rough woodness material. Um, if it's too strong, it's uh, not very realistic. I'm just going to save the project. So at any point I can reload this project in DDo and keep changing from where I'm at. And now open the exporter and set up where I want to export out the different maps for Unity 5 Metal workflow. Make sure you're aware of what folder you're saving it into so you can find the folders. At the end of the day, the main thing is the albedo map. So at the very least, you need to be able to find the albedo and you can load your original uh, normal maps. So here in 
Unity. I'm loading up the three maps, my albedo, metal, normal map, and occlusion, so four maps, and loading in my low poly model. I'll just bring that low poly model. I just accidentally loaded the material, make sure it's the actual model that you want. Bring that into Unity. I'll just rotate it quickly so it's facing the light. I, I could have rotated, rotated the light as well, it doesn't matter. And make a new material for the door and we'll apply the albedo map. So we can see the color straight away. Apply the normal and click fix now so we can see our normal map updated correctly. Apply the occlusion which gives us our darker depth and the metal into the metallic shader. We can see that's not worked very well. It's too shiny. So I'll actually just get rid of it. Just hit delete. I'm happy with just those three materials on it. And we don't really need any metallic sense on it. And uh, really that's the finished model. All assembled inside of Unity and um, ready for your game scene. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned some things and stay tuned for more videos. Cheers.